Welcome back to the third video of the Intro to ArcGIS Online video series. We last left off with a map of Toronto neighborhoods. So we know where each neighborhood are located in Toronto. And if I click through the map, you can see that I renamed the field names or column names and know what each of these polygon represent, like what neighborhood they are. Now, knowing where these neighborhoods are important to answer our question of, is there enough community housing in Toronto and is it properly situated? So we do have the where, but we don't have the what. So to answer that, we are going to further enhance the simple polygon with richer context to answer the question using an analysis tool called the Enrich Layer Tool. Now let's take a look at that. Now before we start our analysis, as of this recording, MapViewer does not have the capability for analysis, but MapViewer Classic does. So we'll be conducting the analysis in MapViewer Classic. To open the same map in MapViewer Classic, simply click on Open in MapViewer Classic on the top right hand corner. That will bring you to a totally different interface. Um, hopefully it's not confusing, but the only button you need to be concerned about is the analysis. So simply click on that. We still have our neighborhood polygon and that would be the one we'll use as an input. So the analysis tool we'll be using uses the Enveronics demographic data and aggregates the data set to apply to a neighborhood polygon. So let's select that tool. It falls under data enrichment and enrich layer is the tool. So let's click on that. Now notice each step and each tool has an information icon. If you simply click on it, it'll tell you a description of a particular process or a tool. So right now we are choosing to enrich the Toronto neighborhood layer and we are going to select variables. And a new window called data browser will show up. And these are all the variables you can choose from to select and apply to your area of interest. And for us, our area of interest are the neighborhood polygons. Now we're talking about housing affordability. So understanding the household income for each neighborhood would be useful. So let's select income, select household income here. And you might be wondering which one is which it's cut off and the hover it looks really weird. You can just select it, check out what this means. Uh, this will be the title. See if you want that. So right now household by income current year, that is something I want. And notice there are historic data set as well. So 2016, 2015, and we take a look below, there are future dates. So these are predicted data set for you to also choose if you were doing any predictive analysis. So now going with our household by income, let's select the household medium income for current year. So I'm happy with that. I'm gonna click on the, this kind of looks like the app drawer, but I'm gonna call it this a data drawer. So let's click on that. And it leads us back to all the other variables. I want to look at housing situation. So let's select that. And I wanna know the tenure of housing. So if I keep browsing, click on tenure, I can also click on structure type to see what type of buildings are there. But let's look at tenure. I'm gonna select 2020 and I'm gonna pick all the demographic data here. Let's do that. And we have information on owned or rented property. So we kind of have an idea of what the real estate situation is in this neighborhood. So let's go back out to the data menu. Now we are missing one crucial information. We should understand how many people are living with that neighborhood. So let's take a look at that variable of population. So I don't need to keep browsing for the data set. I'm gonna pick the most popular population data set. Let's select this and I am going to hit apply. So I selected six variables here and I can edit them if I don't want them, but right now I'm okay with it. So we have the median income, the household total for measuring the tenure. So what type of people, uh, how are they living within that neighborhood, as well as the total population for that neighborhood. The third step is define areas to enrich. Right now, we already defined the area with this polygon neighborhood, 
But what happens if you have a point data or a line data? You need to define an area for the tool to perform the analysis. So let's say you have a point, you can add a 25 kilometer buffer and see 25 kilometer demographic information from that point. So we'll leave it as it is because it's grayed out and we can't do anything about it with our polygon layer. The next step is to give it a name. So I'm going to name it Toronto Neighborhood. demographic and put my initials save my file in share and uncheck this use current map extent what this means is if we had this zoomed in and have this checkbox check it means that the polygon intersecting this view only these four polygons will have the analysis run on now what we want is to run the analysis on all the neighborhoods. So let's turn that off and then check it. And now we can take a look at credits. So right now it's requiring 8.4 credit. So credit is used for computation on the cloud. So that's something to keep in mind, but a lot of the analysis are actually very low in terms of credit consumption. Let's close this off and hit run analysis. Now this is going to create a new layer and it's going to be automatically saved into your folder that's in your content page. This may take a couple of seconds or even a couple of minutes. So grab a coffee and when you're back, you have new data to look at. There we go. So now you'll see on the map, it is a darker blue. It means that there are two layers actually overlapping each other. So if I click on one of the polygon, you'll see that there are two pop up, one for the original neighborhood boundary and the other where we apply the analysis. Now the layer where we applied the analysis contains neighborhood information and the demographic variables we pick in our analysis tools. Unfortunately, when we ran that tool, our field names also revert it back to its original, but you guys know how to revert or rename that. But in order to do that, we actually need to go back to the map viewer. So clicking on open in new map viewer, we are going to proceed without saving. And you might be asking, what about that layer? Well, we'll learn how to bring that layer in. So proceed without saving. So here we are back in the map viewer. Let's add that layer we created through the analysis. So to do that, go over to the left hand side here and select add layer and it'll automatically search within your own content. So these are your own folders that you have in the my content page. Usually the first layer is the most recent layer you have created. So I can see that this is my layer and it's been created on June 15, 2021, which is the date of this recording, which is perfect. I'm going to add this to my map. Once I add it in, it's the same thing. It's a darker shade. It just means two layers are overlapping each other. So I'm going to go back here. So this is my original layer. I'm going to turn that off. This is the demographic layer that we created. Let's select this and check out the data set. So if I click on a pop up, can see that there are my variable that I have generated through that analysis and also the other fields where I need to actually rename. But renaming the field by clicking on configure field and changing it here is not a solution if we want to do further analysis. So what we actually need to do is go behind the scene to the data set and change the field names there. So how do we do that? Well, we can let's close this off click on properties and then go into information and click on more detail. And that essentially will take you back to your items page for that demographic layer. Now inside data, let's click on that. There is an option to, well, look at your data set and also click on this field tab. So let's do that. And this will give you all the field names that you have. So you have your field underscore one. So those are the Toronto neighborhood attributes or the values. And then you have the median income. 
tenure and population, which were the demographic variable fields that we added. So if we click on field one, we can select here and change that. So I remember field one was underscore ID, hit save. And in field two, we can do the same. So do that for all the fields here. And once that is done, you can hit save, go back into your map. You can remove the layer and re-add the layer once this all these field names are changed. So go ahead and do that. Remove this layer, then add back that layer. So your Toronto neighborhood demographic abbreviation of your initials, and then save your map. Until next video, good luck and happy mapping.